Welcome to The Speechy Show. Being a speech language pathologist often means having too much work and not enough planning time. To beat the overwhelm, we're bringing you the tricks and tools that will make your job a little bit easier. Hey everybody, welcome to The Speechy Show. I am your host, Carrie Clark from speechandlanguagekids.com and I'm here today with Kristen Immick from talkingwithtwang.com. Hi Kristen and welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. We're happy to have you on today. I'm glad you were able to come on. You're our second guest, so our third episode with the second guest. So happy to have you. All right, so today we are talking about when you have trouble knowing how to improve vocabulary. So we have a lot of kids who they learn their, you know, their first basic words and they have some vocabulary, but we really need to expand that. And you can't just teach them every word that they could ever possibly need to know. So it's really nice to have strategies for teaching vocabulary. And today Kristen is going to be talking with us about using prefixes and suffixes to help teach that vocabulary. So that's what we are going to be talking about today. And um, Kristen, before we get started, why don't you share a little bit about you and your story? Sure. Um, well, I'm a school-based SLP in the Central Texas area. We serve um, 12 small rural school districts. I have three school districts myself that I work for. Um, I've been an SLP uh, this is my second year. I actually did my CFY last year. I worked as an assistant for two years before that, and then I was a classroom teacher. I taught fourth grade for seven years before becoming an SLP. So I've been in education for a while, even though I'm, you know, fairly new to the speech pathology world. Yeah, but you definitely were in that same realm and doing a lot of that same stuff, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I try to incorporate a lot of my teaching experience into my speech room as well. That's wonderful. And for those of you who don't know me, I am Carrie Clark from speechandlanguagekids.com. And this is The Speechy Show. Each week I interview a new guest and we do giveaways. So if you hang on till the end of the episode, we will be doing a giveaway. Each of us will be doing one giveaway. So there's two chances to win if you stick with us. All right, so talking about vocabulary. Uh, we're going to take questions as we go along, so if anyone is watching live and wants to ask questions, go ahead and type those into the questions box and I will be taking those. But we're going to talk about five different steps that you can take to help work on teaching prefixes and suffixes to improve vocabulary. So the first one we want to talk about is starting with some easier roots and suffixes. Kristen, tell us what, what are some of the, the easier ones that you like to start with and why do you start there? Well, I, I try to start with the ones that kids are going to encounter the most in their reading, in their even in their math problems, and just in life in general. Um, so with prefixes, I usually start with uh, pre, re, un, and miss. Those are the four that I like to hit the most. Um, there are others that are fairly common, but I find that my kids that need work in this area really don't have any understanding of prefixes and suffixes at all. So by hitting those four prefixes, I know that they're going to hear them a lot, they're going to see them a lot, and they're going to have a lot of opportunities to practice. Um, with suffixes, I do um, the F-U-L, L-Y, um, a bull, A-B-L-E, and um, what's the fourth one? Oh, less, L-E-S-S. -S. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> those are the four that I find my kids have the most success with because they encounter them a lot through their reading and just um, life experiences. They might hear the words a lot. So it gives them a good um, good foundation. And then you can build on that, you know, as, as they progress, but um, get them started, you know, learning. I think I lost you there. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we had a little bit of a delay. Okay. Um, that's great. So do you specifically write those into your IEPs or is that just kind of the list you keep in your mind of what you're going to be working on in therapy? Um, I've, I've done it both ways, actually. I It depends kind of on the student and what their need is. Um, a lot of times I will put specific target prefixes and suffixes. Sometimes I'll just put that I'm going to work on target prefixes and suffixes. Um, but a lot of my goals involve identifying the prefixes and suffixes in the words. 
um, being able to determine meaning. Um, so if I'm, if I know I'm going to work on specific ones, I will list them. Um, because otherwise, I mean, there's so many, and I know if my child transferred somewhere else and they had to pick up my goals, I'd want them to know kind of what we had been working on specifically. So I try to give, um, some guidance there in the goals and, um, ultimately I want it to be consistent for them. Sure. And that way the parents and the teachers can know also, you know, they've, they, they might not know the prefix anti or anti, but you know, we're learning pre, re, if, and un. Yeah. I bet that helps make it a lot easier with, with everybody working together on the, the same page. So that's good. Okay. Yeah. And it helps too if I know if the teachers are going to be working on it, certain ones in the classroom as well. Sure. Okay, so that's the first step is picking those, those roots and suffixes that you're going to be using and prefixes. So then the sec second step would be teaching them how to identify where's the root, where's the prefix, where's the suffix. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so what I like to do before I even start teaching them how to define the word using the prefixes and suffixes is I like them to be able to, when I give them a word, find this part is the prefix, this part is the suffix, and then this part um, is the root word or the base word, whatever, you know, you like to call it. And so we'll use colors, we'll highlight, we'll circle. Um, sometimes, if, especially if I'm doing all three pieces in one word, um, I'll have my prefixes be one color, my suffixes be another color, and my root words another color to get them started. Um, and then I have them start using the colors to identify, so they might circle the prefix in the color we've been using, circle the suffix, underline the root word, just getting them to pick out those parts and be able to identify this word is a word and we're going to, you know, kind of change it by adding these other pieces to it. Um, I try to make it fun. I try to give them opportunities to do things on the whiteboard or, um, you know, just use different kinds of materials. They love highlighters. They love using different color markers and crayons. Um, and there are a couple of books um, by Marcy. Um, I don't know if I'm saying her last name right. Aboff, if you were a prefix or if you were a suffix. And those are really fun books. I don't oh. have them with me. Um, but those are really fun books to get the kids kind of learning that where the prefixes go, where the suffixes go, and, um, you know, just starting to get familiar with the different pieces. Because I think they have to have that understanding before they can start really using those words and those pieces. Absolutely. I'll, uh, I will get that link from you for where those books are, and I'll put that in the show notes. So if you are watching with us live or if you're watching the recording, uh, once we get this up, you can go over to speechandlanguagekids.com and go to the blog post or blog link at the top and find the show notes for this episode. And I'll have that link there along with somebody has asked for the list of the main prefixes and suffix again. Can you go through those one more time? And I will write those in the show notes as well. The ones yes, that you for target. Prefixes, I start with pre, un, miss, and re. What was the last one? Re, R-E. Oh, okay. And for suffixes, I do a bull, A-B-L-E, L-Y, L-E-S-S, -E and F-U-L. F-U-L. Okay, perfect. So I will write those in the show notes too, so you guys don't have to take notes on that. Okay, so we've uh, taught the children how to identify the root, the prefix, and the suffix. So the next step would be to teach specific suffixes and prefixes and provide multiple exposures. Can you give some ideas of how you do that in therapy? Yeah, so um, that's when I, I um, start having the kids focus in on, you know, the, and we'll usually start with one or two prefixes at a time. I might do all four depending on how the student has been doing. Um, and I get them manipulating the pieces together. Um, I guess I'm jumping ahead to number four, but I teach them what the meanings are. Like pre, it's going to mean before, and we start thinking of words that we've heard that in. We talk about previews at movies a lot, pre-tests in class. Um, for um, miss, we talk about misspelling words, misplacing items, um, and just start looking at 
the prefix or the suffix with the root word and getting the kids to understand how the prefix and the suffix changes that word. Um, and uh, we try to use them in real life situations. I just try to give them lots of repeated exposure. So if we're working on it over several sessions, I'll start every session by reviewing what's the prefix, where does it go, and that helps us also because the word prefix has pre in it. And so if they can learn those meanings, then when we start finding the words, it helps them a little bit more. Definitely. And we are doing some giveaways. If you're just joining us, we are doing giveaways a little bit later, just in a couple minutes here. And uh, Kristen is going to be giving away a product that is can be used to practice prefixes and suffixes. So definitely stick around for that. That'll be in just a couple minutes. Okay, so the yeah. next step. Oh, go ahead. No, this is, these are some of the teaching aids that I use. So I just, you know, have examples and I don't know if you can see that kind of yeah, it's kind of blurry. <laughs> so we were, I'll have these out. And so when we're going through specific prefixes, we'll refer back to this. Now, what does oh, that mean cool. and how did they use it? And so lots of, I use visuals, not as much as, um, you know, not as many visuals as teaching other areas, but I like to keep that those pages out so they remember where to look if they can't remember. Perfect. All right, and if you guys have any questions as we go along, we are taking questions, so go ahead and type those in. Okay, so the fourth step then, after we've taught them how to identify a root, prefix, and suffix, and we've taught them the specific ones that we want to target and provided multiple exposures, then you talk about allowing them to manipulate the affixes and roots. Can you talk about how that looks? Yeah, um, I like to use little word cards, um, and I just let them on the desk start manipulating their prefixes together with the root word mm -hmm. or the suffixes. And a lot of times what I find is when they don't really understand, they just want to kind of stick any of them together and call it a word. So this, this allows us to um, put the prefixes together or the suffixes together with the root word and then talk about, now what would that mean and how would we use that and have we heard that word before or have we not? And especially using these really common prefixes and suffixes, the kids will recognize, oh yeah, I haven't heard that before. And, you know, we might talk about, well, is that really a word or are we kind of making it up? Does it work or does it not work? Um, and so it gives them some ownership of creating the words and, um, does the word make sense and how would we explain it? And that's when I start building in the definition. And, you know, so if the, if the child puts together re and heat, and I don't even have listed on here that re means again, so we're going to heat it again. What could we reheat? We might reheat our lunch or our leftovers from dinner. Um, um, or if they put preheat together, we'll talk about, well, when would somebody want to preheat something and what could they preheat? And just getting them to start taking ownership of using those word pieces and word parts and definitely building on the meaning at that point. Yeah, that sounds great. Do you find that the kids have a lot of fun with that? I would think that that would be a really engaging activity. Yeah. A lot of times what I'll do is I might just, before I even start teaching it, I might just give them these pieces and see what words they come up with. Oh, yeah. Um, and then do it again at the end after we've worked for a while and see if they make more actual real words instead of just, you know, random made up words. Yeah. That's... So, but they do. They like moving the pieces around. And some kids, they like magnetic stuff. So I put these on magnets and use them on cookies. Or usually we just spread them out on the table. That's great. We just have a lot of fun moving the pieces. Yeah, I love that. Okay, we have a question. Uh, what grade do you begin targeting these skills? Uh, with my students, I usually will start working. Um, I've done it as young as third grade, um, fourth and fifth up through middle school. Uh, actually, getting ready for today, looked at, and, you know, I'm in Texas, and so we don't use Common Core, but we use Teaks, and they actually start using prefixes and suffixes in the teaks in second grade in Texas. Okay. Um, third grade in Common Core. So there's prefixes and suffixes listed in Common Core, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, using the root words and the affixes. So um, the basic understanding of these, I probably wouldn't do as young as second grade, but most of them tend to be 
fourth, fifth, and even middle schoolers that are just still struggling with vocabulary. So I use this a lot with um, the older kids who just need those extra, that extra push for vocabulary development. Yeah, definitely. All right. I think that's all the questions we have right now. If anybody else has any questions, go ahead and type those in. So then our last step that we, we were looking at here for prefixes and suffixes would just be practicing using those words in sentences and in writing. So how do you do that in therapy or are you using that in the classroom with the teachers? How does that look for you? Um, well, I always have my goals and objectives lead up to that the student can not just identify the word, not just give a definition, but can actually use it functionally. And so with some of the kids, we might just do it orally where their goal ultimately is to be able to um, use the word in a sentence, like a good sentence. <laughs> you know, mom has to preheat the oven before she cooks. Mm -hmm. With my kids that are my kids that are able to do the writing um, or need extra help in that area, we always will write out the sentences, even just on whiteboards. We might write on the table. Um, and I always try to communicate with the teachers and let them know this is what we're working on. Um, and, you know, especially in Texas, they take a writing test in fourth grade and in seventh grade. And so um, I want to get them writing as much as I can in my room, um, especially, you know, since writing sentences, we can fit into our short little sessions, harder to, you know, write full paragraphs and essays, but anything I can do to get them, you know, expanding their language overall. Absolutely. One skill. Yeah, that sounds great. All right, so those are our five steps. We are gonna go, we're gonna do our giveaway in just a second here, but we wanted to talk about your favorite resource for teaching prefixes and suffix. What do you got? Well, I, I use my own a lot. That's um, good, what do you I got? Have, <laughs> I have a prefixes and suffixes packet that I made, it's up in my Teacher's Take Teacher store, which is Talking With Twang, um, and it has those uh, visuals for teaching all the different suffixes, and it does include the four main ones of prefixes and suffixes Dave mentioned earlier. Wonderful. Um, and I have sheets of these word cards. So these are all very common root words that um, students should should know. And if they don't, we you know work on learning these words. And I have pages of prefixes and suffixes that can be cut out, so these can get um, manipulated back and forth. Um, and then the packet also has recording sheets, so when we get to where they're making their own words, they have a place where they can kind of keep track. Um, and I have a couple worksheets in there that can work or, you know, like um, um, at the end of the unit, you know, if you want to kind of see what they can do on their own. And then I have some game boards, and these can be printed out in color, but I just usually keep everything black and white. Um, but just a lot of different ways. To work with the words and um, kind of make it fun. Absolutely. So that is in your Teachers Pay Teachers store, and I will put a link in the show notes. But if somebody wants to go find it right now, where what's the title of it in your store? It's the uh, prefixes and suffixes packet in my store, and it's actually um, on the fifty percent off for the November SLP must have sale today. Ooh. So um, you can find it in that category on my store page, which is Talking With Twang, um, or using that hashtag. Um, or I can post a link also on my Facebook page. Okay, um, yeah, and af it. after we finish on Facebook Live, if you'll hop over to my Facebook page and just write it in the comments of this, then people can see it in the recording of this as well. So that'll be good. Okay, all right, so, okay. and that is your... Giveaway. And that's your giveaway today, right? Okay. So we're gonna do two giveaways if you're on here with us live right now. <laughs> yeah, Darla, 50% off. Darla, hang around, because you might win it free. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do two giveaways. The first giveaway is gonna be for the prefixes and suffixes, <laughs> suffixes packet. <laughs> I have trouble saying that, that Kristen just talked about. And the second giveaway today will be for my membership. That is the Speech Therapy Solution. If you're not familiar with that, that is my membership for speech language pathologists where you get access to a training training video library, a library full of print and go therapy materials. We also do a monthly webinar and weekly Q&A calls so you can hop on and ask me questions about your tough cases and get help. So that's gonna be the second giveaway. You're gonna get two free months in my membership. 
All right, so I'm going to ask a question and the first two people to respond are gonna win. Are you ready? Okay, so here it is. Give a word that contains a prefix, a root, and a suffix. It can be any word, but it has to have a prefix and a suffix. So the first two people to write in words with prefixes and suffixes will win our prizes today. All right, so while we are waiting for somebody to win, <laughs> hope that helps give you some guidance on teaching vocabulary, especially to those older kids like Kristen was talking about where they just need that extra push to really kind of understand vocabulary and have some tactics that they can use when they are encountering those, those unfamiliar words. All right, Darla has impossible. We're gonna give it to you, Darla. So Darla gets the first prize. She's gonna get the, the packet. Kristen, how can she contact you to get that one for free? Do you want her to email you? She can email me. I think Darla knows how to contact me, actually. <laughs> All right, Darla. <laughs> All right, and we've got... She might even already have that packet. Oh, okay. Well, you guys can work out if you want to give her a different prize. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, Julie has preheatable. There you go. All right, Julie, you get two free months in my membership. So you can contact me by emailing me at carrie at speechandlanguagekids.com and that is C-A-R-R-I-E and I'll give you the two free months for that membership. So congratulations Julie and Darla. All right. So let's see. If you need any guidance on any other topics or if you're looking for help with your tough cases, do check out my membership. You can see that at speechandlanguagekids.com slash join. And Kristen, please let us know where we can find more about you or where people can find out uh, what else you have for sale in your Teachers Pay Teachers store. Sure. My uh, my Teachers Pay Teachers store is Talking with Twang. Um, I also have a blog. It's talkingwithtwang.com. And um, if you have any more questions or need any more information, my email is kristin at talkingwithtwang.com. It's K-R-I-S-T-I-N. Perfect. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. No, social media sites also. Oh, yeah. Are you on Facebook and what's your big one? Facebook? Facebook and Instagram are the two that I'm on the most. All right. And I... they're all the same. Talking with Twang. Perfect. I need to get on Instagram. I haven't done much with that. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. And we hope you can join us next Monday afternoon. We'll have another live show for you with two more giveaways. So definitely join us and we will have the recorded version of this up on the website soon as well. So thanks everyone for joining us and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today on The Speechy Show. We hope today's tips have helped you feel a little less stressed and a little more confident about your work. If you're looking for more stress busters and confidence boosters, we'd love to have you join us in The Speech Therapy Solution where you'll get access to a huge library of premium training videos and another library of print and go therapy materials. You can also get help with your tough cases by joining Carrie on the weekly Q&A calls or by posting in the exclusive Facebook group. Plus, group members can join us for a monthly webinar that can be used for continuing education credit. Head on over to speechandlanguagekids.com slash join to check out all the amazing benefits of the Speech Therapy Solution membership. Bye for now.